after a severe defeat and a an embarrassing defeat to be honest of the british empire made by a brave squadron of battle cruisers that have taken on a vastly superior force and inflicted crushing damage on it the british government has sued for peace they have had to give up their possession of the port of gibraltar which is a strategic location at the entrance of the Mediterranean and has allowed us to retrieve our fleet that was stranded and couldn't couldn't get through back uh, couldn't get out back through Gibraltar and through the British Channel as such we have now managed to uh, scrap some of the old ships and get their crew the heroes welcome that they deserve and the political situation has changed somewhat after this after this fight, our next potential enemies are going to be either the Soviet Union or the Japanese. As such, we will definitely need to, re uh, need to reinforce our fleet around Tsingdao. Currently, we have three submarines in port and we've got the uh, Gneisenau, uh, the Bayern and a couple of older ships. So the Bayern, the, uh, the uh, Dessau and the tu uh, Thuringia are probably going to be scrapped. Frankfurt and the Gneisenau can remain, which is a bit confusing because we do have now a Gneisenau class heavy cruiser. But the first order of business is to is to see uh, what lessons we have learned from the last war. And for that, we're going to have to start talking about our battle cruisers because while well, these have well, not these ones, uh, where are they here? While they have, while they have fought valiantly, I was a little disappointed with the performance of the secondaries. So especially the relatively large caliber secondaries have not really performed like I wanted them to, especially uh, get, because I was hoping that they would work well against light ships. So given that it's now 1912, I think a new set of ships is in order and we'll see what we can get ourselves into. Hello everybody and welcome back to Ultraman Admiral Dreadnoughts. Today we are going to design some new ships and start construction of a new series of ships to get ready for the next conflict. We'll be, uh, if we are looking at our political situation, it's probably going to be either the Soviets or the Japanese that we're going to have to face. Uh, Japan has, uh, has 10 capital ships, 14 heavy cruisers, 35 light cruisers and 40 destroyers. And the Soviet Union has 9 battleships, 6 battle cruisers and a smattering of, cru of of smaller cruisers as well so we do have we do have the shanhos class of heavy cruisers that we're currently building but uh i'm sort of keen to see if we can get ourselves a slightly more modern design of something that can more easily deal with the light forces so that's what we're going to be doing today so the idea for today's build is to incorporate what we've learned from the last engagement and there were kind of two things that were standing out to me. The 150 mm casemates are pretty useless. They had really big trouble actually hitting anything. So we were looking at these were these are the things that that I've been using, and their their accuracy was just not good enough, and their rate of fire as well to really do something about the about the small ships that we had so much trouble with. So if I want to have a cruiser that can escort to, that can sail together with the battle cruisers in a group. I need something that can deal with small small ships more effectively. And for that, we are going to not go for a battleship hull, but uh, we're going for the large armored cruiser, which is the same hull that we had on the Shanhaus class. And we're, we're going to build that for, uh, for turning because it's going to have to deal with destroyers and torpedoes. So I want that ship to be a little bit closer than the battle cruisers and to deal with light to be able to take on light forces now you could argue why you're not losing using a light cruiser because the light cruisers are very underwhelming as they stand so I, I can put i can kind of fit a couple of these guns onto the things but the light cruisers have the problem that they are extremely easy to blow out of the water so if i want something that can survive a little bit of a closer encounter with a with a screening group and is not immediately blown out of the water, then I am gonna go with a heavy cruiser. And we are going to reduce the displacement down for starters, standard crew quarters. Now, 
this thing has got we do one what's the uh, what's the speed we can get out of this 25.5 so let's get uh, 25.5 knots out of this and that's the design uh, ma uh, maximal design speed we can go higher but then it starts eating into weight because we're going to need a lot more engine so um, i think i'm okay with that uh, our current uh, turning circle is 325 meters let's have a quick look how that compares uh, let's see the Scharnhorst and see what the where we are there. 420 meters. So we want to have a tighter. We want to optimize for maneuverability and for firepower against uh, against small ships, while at the same time also while at the same time also maintaining some some defense and some capability of dealing with other things. So let's begin sticking the best towers that we have available onto the ship for now. And we'll see how that goes. We'll just put one there for now. Actually, that's probably going to be needing a little bit further in the rear because this uh, this design has this uh, this big foxhole here, which means the whole thing is potentially a little a little forward heavy. But uh, we can we can deal with that uh, as we go. Uh, we will stick one large funnel onto it. And then uh, we might even still pull the uh, we might even still pull the uh, pull that down. We'll see how it goes. But uh, let's begin with the turning circle. Right now we've got 358 meters, which is uh, which is good, but we can do better. So let's get a better fuel. That helps. Uh, we are going to use the turbine engine. That helps. We're going to put an auxiliary engine in, which helps with rudder shift. And we're down to 300 meters turning circle. We're going to get the best propeller shaft that we have for better turn rate and we are actually going to go for an unbalanced rudder so the rudder surface is is quite biased towards one side so this is good for turning rate but uh, it's not very good for acceleration so that gets our turning circle down to 200 meters and we're going to have to however the turning rate is 3.9 and again i have i'd have to check back but we'll, we'll now let's have a quick look in the Scharnhorst. Uh, turning rate is uh, even worse. Okay, so the turning rate is still pretty good on this ship. Let's put the electric. Uh, that gives me ship flaws. Let's see. Let's see what the difference is. That's 4.33 and 181. 4.17 192. Yeah, I think that's the hydraulic one's probably okay. So we don't need uh, we don't need the electric steering gear, which has quite is quite an advanced technology and has quite some downsides as well. All right, so that's that set up. So 192 uh, meters minimum turning circle. We still have to put armor on the whole thing, so we'll get to that in a minute. But uh, the next question comes to the guns, and as our research has progressed, we are actually see that we have we actually have more modern designs of the larger cruiser guns so we've got mark threes of the 229 254 and 279s whereas we've only got mark twos which you can see in the reload time the two or three millimeter mark twos have have a 1.27 rounds per minute whereas the 229s can actually do 1.7 and the 254s can do almost as much as the two or threes but with a larger caliber because they are more modern they are a more modern design so i'm almost thinking of going with something something a little bit graf speish sort of <laughs> and i was thinking of putting 283s on that and just to have some firepower against larger targets because that's also a mark 3 turret so let's see what that would look like uh, can we fit that in the front we cannot so we're going to have to move the we're going to have to move the tower down if we want to make that happen and that means we'll move that in a little bit here and then we can put that that twin barrels up in front and then i'm thinking two in the rear so that'd be one here they are relatively large so let's see how that looks weight wise because I, I have gone down a bit in the displacement uh, they they do look a bit large for this ship to be fair maybe we'll maybe we'll take the maybe we take the 254 mils What's the difference really in penetration between these two? Uh, let's say effective range 5,000 meters. Um, that's a 188 millimeter of uh, of belt width, and it'd be 220, uh, no, 237 actually. So 
uh, I do want six at least on them, and I think the hole is too big for the for the two eighties. So let's just go with the slightly smaller one and see if we can fit a um, can fit a barbette here. Uh, yep. In fact, maybe we can find a smaller barbette. Uh, that'll that'll do actually. Mm, this is this is relatively slim though. So maybe I can still fit something on the side. Okay, let's go with that. And uh, we're just going to put another one of these onto that. And we've got good firing arcs around these. Okay, so we've got six guns, six main guns. Now I'm not going to put any casemates into these things. Or, or, or at best, very, very small ones. But what I want to build this around to deal with small ships is going to be the 105mm uh, 105 millimeter triplet. So let's see... Let's see if we can still fit some of these next to the barbette. We can, in fact, actually fit some of these next to the barbette. So can we put some down there? No. But we can fit some up here. And we can put a set over here. Let's see. Let's see if that if, let's see if that impacts the arc. Because I would love to get two more maybe. So one more here and one more there. And that would leave us with a blistering amount of uh, of guns that aren't going to be super effective at close range, uh, at, at long range. But uh, for the engage, like if we're thinking of about five kilometer and under, then uh, they might actually be able to do something. So the other thing that we're going to do with those guns is uh, gun caliber turrets. So we're going to make these three uh, one of fives, and we we'll see if we can increase the or how much we, we can get 10% barrel length out, which is going to hit the rate of fire a little bit, but gives them a little bit better precision, which is definitely something we can work with. All right, so these these are these are sort of the uh, the secondary spec <laughs> heavy cruiser guns here, or des destroyer hunter guns. I, I know that they're not particularly well. Um, we can also get 51 millimeter secondaries, although I think 88s might be nicer. Let's see, but I think these are too large. Yeah, these are too large. Can we get 51 millimeter triplets and fit them anywhere? Uh, not really. We just don't have the space on the on the hole for these things. So maybe we'll put some of the uh, 51. Or let's put 88s, 88s into the casemates. Uh, that's one, two. Also, the the firing arcs on these case. Actually, let's put them on the superstructure because the firing arcs on these casements are absolutely atrocious. Um, I mean, we, we can just we can as well put put uh, all all the guns that we can fit. And I am thinking of uh, putting a. Do I want to put a side mounted torpedo launcher onto these things? Uh, how much? How heavy is that? Twenty seven tons. That might not be a bad idea. Because we are going to be dealing with destroyers, so let's have a let's have a, a side-mounted torpedo launcher. Okay, um, we are going to let's let's figure everything else out. So, uh, best armor, obviously, barbettes. We do need the best anti-torpedo protection that we can get because uh, we are going to deal with torpedoes. So, double hull uh, and reinforced bulkheads, and definitely the best anti-flood. So, pretty much the best of everything as we can. The I am going to get the main guns on, I think standard ratio because that'll give them give them some capability against uh, against things like like cruisers and maybe even battleships with these guns. But uh, the secondaries on max HE obviously, and uh, we are. I uh, let, let's see what let's see with these shells. So currently we've got the high capacity high explosive, which is relatively low on penetration because of the fuse time, but it has the biggest payload and it makes the biggest kaboom. But let's see what the penetration on the HE is. Yeah, the HE uh, is penetration is too low. So uh, what would that look like if we went with a uh, nose fuse on these guns? Uh, it's still not enough. Let's go for a base fuse. Uh, now I think we're starting to talk. Yeah, 37 millimeter at 5,000 meters. That's uh, probably uh, sorry, actually 13 millimeter HE penetration. Hmm, quite might not be might not be quite enough actually. 
Uh, do we want to go for soft cap? Um, ba -ba -bum. Or we can stick on, stay on the semi-armor piercing because these guns have a relatively decent penetration against light targets and the, uh, the semi-AP, or we could go semi-ballistic, uh, that'll give us a decent amount of penetration on the AP but still uh, still a good a good amount of damage on the AP as well actually and we could uh, we could get the secondaries to also fire fire AP because with AP these things actually have sufficient sufficient penetration and then we could leave the we could leave that on base fuse for example see what we're going to use for propellant uh, we definitely want tube powder and I'm happy with TNT one. I'm not a fan of these because they cause flash fire. They they explode very catastrophically. So and I'm almost thinking light shells because that gets the reload down. Let's see what that looks like. Uh, we will have um, we will have a decent amount of uh, a decent amount of damage with these things, and I think the. HE is probably enough to get through unarmored destroyers and uh, I'm gonna go with increased HE but or actually I'm gonna go with s yeah standard ratio actually here for the secondaries as well so we have a balanced load out of, of, of AP and um, and HE because the AP is definitely should definitely be enough to deal with destroyers and also with uh, with uh, light cruisers if it comes to that and the 254s are going to be absolutely devastating against that so the uh, casemate gun caliber obviously needs to be up to 88 millimeter and again we're going to see what we can do in terms of barrel length the 254s i'm going to leave as is i think the uh the uh, ap penetration with the semi armor piercing what have, what have we ended up using uh yeah semi ballistic so semi armor piercing ballistic cut is going to be enough to uh, to bonk maybe the occasional battleship at close range, but uh, will struggle. Uh, but it, these are meant against uh, against cruisers actually, and uh, because they are Mark threes, they actually have the same or a better reload, or well, not quite, but almost almost a better reload uh, at the, than the uh, two or threes, and a relatively large caliber, so they can. They can blast light cruisers and other things to smithereens if they need to, and the rest is all about uh, all about those secondaries. Okay, so we've got that sorted out. Uh, we definitely want the best turret traverse that we can get, or even though that is going to cause us some ship flaws. But because uh, obviously because we are going to be maneuvering a lot and we're going to be dealing with destroyers, and we also want enhanced reloading. Uh, Fast torpedoes is not a bad thing because we're not really going after battleships and we're going to go for 19 inch torpedoes. Uh, range finder, we definitely don't need long range, so I'm going to go with base accuracy and coincidence 3. Uh, we are going to need the hydrophone and we're going to get the advanced radio in as well. All right, uh, we've still got 2000 tons of displacement to work with. And then we can start. Uh, actually, let's let's try to balance the ship out before we do that. We ha don't have the engine effic efficiency, so we may need to go for induced boilers here. Yes, that's a lot better because we we're gonna need the we're gonna need the acceleration once um, once we've been uh, to get out of the turn again. So we do have a bit of an aft weight offset. Can I still fit some 88s into the uh, front? Uh, okay, now that's too much. One. Uh, that's already a forward weight offset. Okay, let's not put them there. Let's just... Um, uh, we'd have aft offset, so we need to move things a little bit forward. So let's just move the funnel a little bit and the rear superstructure. Uh, we can, but can probably do a bit more. Okay, that's probably a bit close. So let's get that sort of in the middle here. And then we can actually just move the barbette a bit forward. That'll also that'll also save on uh, belt armor. So we can just pull that. Uh, that's giving us forward weight offset. So, uh, no, I didn't want to delete that. Let's give that back. 
Uh, that's forward already weight offset. Let's put it here. 0.7 forward weight offset. Can we put this a little bit further back? Okay, that's not doing an awful lot. So let's leave that there and just pull the rear superstructure a little bit back. Mm, and then we can pull the, the engines because the, the funnel de uh, defines where the engines are. So obviously. And that looks... Uh, we can do one better, I think. Yep. Yeah. Okay, that looks very balanced. All right, so we've got a very balanced ship with a lot of small, of, of relatively small secondaries and six relatively big guns to deal with anything uh, that the secondaries can't hit. Now, armor. Let's see. Let's see how much we can still put on armor here. Uh, we obviously want the. Uh, let's max out the citadel armor for starters. And okay, so that's twenty millimeters. Let's see how much we can get here. 57, so let's make that 55. I don't like these odd numbers. And we can get another inner belt here. 40 millimeters of that. All right, uh, we already almost had 12,000 uh, tons weight. So we are getting a little close here. Um, I do want, uh, I do want at least a 200 millimeter main belt if I can. Ooh. That is going to cost us, however. So if we, can we get 150 forward and 150 aft? Uh, this is going to be a close range ship, so I'm not too concerned about the deck armor. Uh, but we are going to see what we can do with the rest of this. Uh, let's give the 200 millimeter on the conning tower as well. And uh, 50 millimeter forward and aft. That gets it balanced. And we can throw the rest sort of into the superstructure. Can we get 100 millimeters? Oh, nope. <laughs> can we get 50? Yes, we can. Okay, so we've got 50 millimeter superstructure armor. Um, and I think we can... Uh, the turrets are relatively heavily armored. We can lower that down a little bit. It's always good to have a bit, uh, a bit of... To have a little bit of... Um, Actually, the hundred, the one hundred fives are not, uh, are not, uh, have no turret armor. Now that can't stand. Uh, Forty millimeters is all we can give them, and forty-five on top. So that's what we'll have to live with. Uh, the eighty-eights definitely don't need that much armor. So let's give these forty millimeters as well, and that means we've got fifty tons for eventual refits as a little bit of space, and this is going to be the Baden class. Now we're back to 246 meters, but that is with all the armor and everything on it. Now we could we could try to um, to mess around with uh, with uh, with the beam and draft, but I'm, I'm quite happy with this design as it is. So I think we're going to go with that. So that's going to be the Baden, and that will be our uh, I would call it an escort cruiser actually until we have a better light cruiser hull that we can actually work with so for now for now this should work reasonably well as an escort cruiser uh, especially against the vast amount of light forces that would our potential enemies are having now i am thinking of uh, taking another look at the nassau class because we have uh, still three ships the gneisenau the nassau and the kaiser friedrich the third which um, are on, two of them are in gibraltar and one of them is in is in East Asia, so let's see what we if uh, we had a refit, but we haven't actually used it. So I think we can delete that refit and uh, get a get a newer one because now we're actually getting to refit them. So if we are going to go to the NASA and let's see what we can do with this thing, and if we can. Uh, put some life, some new life into this relatively old hull. So we're going to go for a 1912 refit now. And we will see what we can do with this thing. Uh, first of all, let's switch her to more modern uh, turbine engine and uh, more modern armor, which is going to be more lightweight. We are already uh, we've already got the double bottom hole, reinforced bulkheads, we've got the anti-flood, and we can get a better citadel armor. Okay, that gives us a bit of weight back to play with. 
So let's see. We might. We don't. Need, we're not gonna need forced boilers. We can probably even go with natural boilers. Yes, that gives us a bit more weight back. Uh, let's get rid of these casements because honestly, they are not useful. Let's get rid of the 150s. They don't do an awful lot, and they are super heavy because there's this whole this whole bulk of them in there. Uh, what are the what are the small ones? 88s. Yeah, the 88s can stay. The 88s I'm happy with. But these guys, not so much. Now, uh, the side gun, obviously I'm not going to start messing with the main guns, because you know there's plenty of them. But uh, uh, they are a bit stubby. So what's the, what can these guns do? They don't have the greatest range, and the, the accuracy is pretty bad. But the, the rate of fire is not terrible. Maybe we'll just, uh, we'll just increase the barrel length a bit. And what is that going to look like? That looks a little bit better. Now it's, a, it's an L47. That obviously has cost us some weight again, but uh, that's fine. And then, instead of putting the casemates in there, we're going to go with the same... Let's see if we can fit some of these on the side. And these will have to do, honestly. Uh, let's fit one here. Is that interfering with these guns? I think... Yes, it is, unfortunately. Um... I, we could go with 105mm casemates, but I'm really not happy with these casemate, gu casemate guns. I think these would be better. Um, but uh, if I stick them there, they are definitely interfering with things. Because of the sheer amount of main guns that we have here. Um, hmm. It's not really a very good thing what we could... Not a good place to, to put those. Unless I'm going to start reducing the main guns, and obviously, like, why why would we do that? I mean, I could put them here, but um, I think we might have to... This is such an old design, we might just have to uh, get the casements down to 100, uh, 105 millimeters instead of the uh, 150s. And that might be a little bit more effective at dealing with smaller ships. Maybe even lower. Maybe we get 88 case, 88 millimeter casements. Because... 5,000 meters, the 88s are actually more precise than the 102s. So, yeah, why not? Let's let's go with... Let's get these out of here. These are not good. Or, alternatively, we completely get rid of the casement guns and use the weight to up-armor these things. Because their armor is insufficient. They've got 300mm main belt. That's not gonna... That's not gonna be enough. And this gives us a bit of weight back. How much? Uh, how heavy are these? 16 tons. Yeah, that's not bad. So let's put the let's put the relatively light. Uh, oh, we can't even fit them here. Well, that's a shame. Um, and these things are 22 tons. That's not too bad. So it's like 100 tons or so for the five. Okay, let's let's put the 102s in here because these are the smallest caliber that we can put in there. Uh, up these to. Uh, up these to 105 and we are uh, due to the casement armor we are already losing a lot of weight mm -hmm. I do want some secondaries on these things but honestly they haven't been super successful and yeah these are just single sh single shot they have a relatively high rate of fire though okay we'll leave those in uh, we give them the maximum barrel length that we can get and the and see what what else we can stick into armor here. Uh, we have we can get a better range finder for better accuracy. That's probably worth it. Uh, do we have torpedo tubes on these things? Um, I don't think we do. I hope we don't. Uh, no, there, there's, there aren't even any mounts on these. Okay. So uh, tube powder and TNT bursting charge. That is fine. Uh, we've got standard reloading hydraulic turrets. Uh, we can get enhanced reload in, so maybe they can get a little bit more fire out. They've got increased AP, max HE on the secondaries. Uh, these things got an HE penetration of absolutely nothing, so we might have to go down to base fuse for the, for the HE. And I think that is maybe sufficient to actually do something against destroyers. So... Um, we could even go cap ballistic on the 
uh, yeah, these are 280. So let's give them cut ballistics so they have a bit more penetration power. And she might be able to do something about enemy battleships. And uh, this is... Mm, how much weight is that gonna ch is that gonna put us down? Uh, 829, 894. Okay, let's put the rest into armor and see uh, see what we can get what we can get what we can get out of here. So we definitely want a bigger uh, like a somewhat thicker belt armor. Uh, can we get 350? Yes, we can. And uh, can I get 180 forward? Ooh, that's heavy. Um, Maybe 150 forward and 150 aft. How's that look? Uh, deck armor needs needs is too thin. Let's get let's see if we can get 120 millimeter on the main deck. And that brings us very close already. Uh, let's give it 100 millimeter main. She's got a bit of a forward weight offset, but we can balance that out with the armor. Uh, can we get more here? Yes, we can. So how much can we get here? 60 millimeter inner deck. Uh, 175 and 140 here okay and then we've got a little bit we can use that we've got four weight offset so we can get the aft deck a little bit heavier but I would also like to have more forward deck armor as well because that is very th that is relatively th slim uh, let's see how much we can get in and before we are running out of weight and I think that's about no nope, that's too much uh, okay so that would be about good and then we can put a little bit into uh, a bit more into superstructure let's see how much we can get in there just so we don't get our funnels and everything shot off okay that'd be too much so let's do it 45 Okay, so that's the 1912 Nassau class, somewhat refitted. And I think that's going to be the last refit we're going to do on these things. And uh, if I've missed some... Oh, I haven't put the auxiliary engine in. Dang it. Okay, that's going to put us over. Uh, do I want that? Yes, I probably do. Um, do I want better rudder shift? Not necessarily. I mean, these are really old ships, but... Uh, Okay, so we're gonna have to pull back a little bit on the superstructure. Let's go. Let's walk back on the superstructure armor. We were at 20 mils previously, and that might have to actually just do. And that's still not enough. So let's get the aft deck. There we go. That's fitting. Okay, and I think that is going to be it for refit. That is the definite design of the Nassau class. So let's save that. Our research has informed us that we will get, th they expect the geared steam turbines that have been in, in development to be ready within the next two months, which is going to be a breakthrough in ship propulsion. We're also looking at uh, an, a probably actually usable revision of the 14 inch or 355 millimeter or 356 millimeter in our case gun for Mark II coming up in uh, maybe a bit over half a year. Uh, we're working on some hull strengthening and some better boilers and uh, we will get um, probably a, um, uh, a slightly better version of cordite that is not as <laughs> it's not as catastrophically exploding, exploding when it shouldn't. So definitely some improvements on the horizon here. So I am thinking of consolidating the fleet. We currently have uh, we currently have uh, uh, two of the Kaiser Wilhelm II uh, class battleships there, the Kaiser Wilhelm II and the Kronprinz. So I'm thinking of balancing that out, and uh, between the Baltics and between our Asian possessions, because uh, well we have we serve we have two of the Nassau's which are in the Mediterranean, and we've got one of the Nassau's in Southeast Asia so we can refit these uh, I want to send one probably the uh, which one do we have what well, doesn't matter we can send the Kaiser Wilhelm the second and uh, get uh, send her over to Asia 
and then consolidate everything else. So uh, I'll be splitting the battle cruiser group. I'll have two battle cruisers and one of the uh, battleships as the leads of their respective uh, the respective units, with with some support from the older ships. Uh, we are going to have the first Chanhot class of heavy cruisers coming in in uh, in a year's time. And uh, once these are repaired, then then I'll start sending them sending them around. And we we might need to build a couple more of the uh, V16 class destroyers, but um, because you know they they tend to to sink rather rather quickly, but they they are quite useful. And we, oh, we actually have a whole set under construction. So in four months we'll have another another set of the V16s. And uh, that's what I'm going to be setting up. And then uh, we will have to see what the future will bring. Anyway, that's it for me today. Thanks, everybody. And I will see you next time. Bye-bye.